<laughs> snowboarder's gonna fall out the back. <laughs> so Spencer's excited for the snow. We got like uh, probably close to a foot of snow, maybe a little less, but uh, it's uh, it snowed down pretty good. We we usually I'm in Central Iowa, so we probably don't we don't get this big of snow ever. So before we push snow, we're gonna go out and ride because Spencer has to get going. Uh, he's got school in like two hours, so we're gonna try and get out and ride. And then it's supposed to get super cold, so it's it's gonna be tough to ride after this. And then I'm gonna push snow, so this video is gonna be everything snow. We brought the snowboards too. I got them in the back of the Ranger Danger. So what we're gonna do is hook up like a, it'll be like wakeboarding, but on the back of the snowmobile with snow. So. So to run you guys through sleds, uh, this is Spencer's sled. It's a 2010 Articat 800, and this is my sled. It's a 2012 uh, Articat 800. It's a XF. They're both Crossfire, so they're both on trail, off trail type of sleds. <laughs> So a while back, CNA Pro Skis, uh, if, you, if you guys don't know, I uh, started another channel six years ago and that's the squad. It's all farm and similar gaming. But on there we post, uh, I put every once in a while I'll post in, in real life videos. And so we did a lot of snowmobiling videos last year and CNA Pro Skis reached out at the end of the year and uh, they sent out some skis. So we put those on. Keep going. Okay. We got a surprise. Tyler stopped by. He's just a random subscriber. Lives close by. Stop by. You want to ride Stonebill? Sure. Jump on. It's How was little, it? It was fun. <laughs> a bit different than ATV, yeah, right? it's a little bit different. These clips are like all over the place, so I should probably explain this a little better. What me and Spencer like to do is we like to just go ride the ditches, and then you can like ride from small town to small town, and you can just, there's kind of little trails that are marked, and you can ride all over the place. Uh, some other people like to go out like to west where there's real deep snow and stuff like that, but if we get a big snow, all we do is just uh, go ride ditches and just screw around for a bit, so. Hopefully that explains it a little better. or nothing. Let's go. So Spencer's gone. He had to run back and it seems like he always leaves when the very hard work, hardest of the hardest work of pushing snow with the skid steer begins. We're gonna fire this up, uh, the Kubota, and I'm gonna push, I'm gonna plow this driveway and then maybe another one over there, quick. We'll let that warm up. And I'm so shocked that that doesn't have a block heater and it just seems like no matter the temperature, that thing just fires right up. Our old John Deere skid steer had a block heater and it, it didn't have glow plugs though, I don't think so. It seems like every spring when all the snow melts, it always pushes into the building. So I'm trying to get as much snow as possible away from the building. It's just because of the slope. I don't know, the gravel has been built up higher than this building. This building was built like 40 years ago. But every spring, when all the snow's melting, you'll walk into the building and the whole thing is just, there's water all over the floor.
one thing that's kind of weird about that skid steer that it takes some time getting used to is that like that bubbling, I think it's deaf sound on that skid steer. But it kind of sounds like they're making meth in the back of my skid steer. It's a little creepy back there. Now I'm gonna include like a bonus snowmobile clip and uh, I had to ask my dad for this uh, if I could include this, but he bought a 2013 Articat XF 1100 non-turbo. He traded in the four-wheeler and they had this at Storm Lake Honda there and this was priced pretty good. Four-wheeler uh, was decent. And he was, I was like, hey, you can get another snowmobile. We have another spot. So he bought this snowmobile and uh, two days later, he goes out and rides with a buddy and totals this thing. So, well, it's not too bad, to be honest. It's a heck of a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. The tunnel is bent in and the track completely rubs on the snowmobile. The whole tunnel is bent and uh, the front's not too, the front, obviously you got some plastic damage there. Skis might be a little messed up. It looks kind of solid. The only thing is this whole tunnel is completely smoked back here. When we rescued this, I went out and uh, filmed it, but I wanted to be respectful, especially with my dad, cause he just wrecked this and he was probably pretty pissed. So I didn't do any talking. I just held the GoPro and helped. So I'm gonna include that footage cause it's kind of cool how they rescued it. He was basically going to a ditch and this was at dark. So it was completely, it was pitch black out. Obviously he had lights, but he could either go up onto basically a bike trail, cement bike trail that had no snow on it. So he's like, ah, I don't really want to do that. Or he could go up on the roadway. And this was like a really steep ditch. And so he, he, uh, he tried to go up on the roadway, but it was kind of pitch black out and he tried to make that he couldn't get the sled up on the roadway and the roadway to be fair was really slim like the cutoff was like there was no room for a snowmobile if there was another car coming on that roadway he would have got smoked and he would have kind of popped up on top of that roadway and got smoked by a car so he didn't really have any options and he was like he tried to get up on the roadway and then uh he's like screw it and he kept falling down into a ditch kept going down in a ditch and he didn't realize how deep this thing was in the ditch this snowmobile went flying in the ditch. He kind of jumped off and landed on some rocks. There were some, there were some pretty darn big rocks down there. And so you guys will see that in the footage where we're trying to get the, we're trying to literally pull this this snowmobile out with a, a tow truck out of those rocks. Luckily he was okay and stuff. This will, this is, I think it's going to be totaled. I'm not sure, but it's a lesson. It's a lesson. If you guys come into a ditch and stuff, don't just keep going. Stop. Look around see where you're at, see your options. Don't just keep going. It's literally gonna fall. Yeah, we should've kicked this out. Before. Yeah. Do you, you guys wanna go back down a bit? If we no? back it down, I think we can kick that rock out. Can you back it down a bit? Here, hold this. Pick up here, that's not where we're gonna fight. There's rebar in it. Let's get this rock right here, it's literally. Yeah, it's got rebar and we've been trying. We tried oh, really? to move it already. Okay. Watch yourself, see if I can hang on the cable and do it. Okay, watch out. Okay, if it's gonna hold. Well, I'd like to move it. Yeah. yeah well, I think if we so. get it up to there, I think we can kind of reposition the camera. Yeah, can okay. Put yeah. Ready? You guys wanna swing that? Stop! Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, we'll release that one. I was gonna say. In this and get you, want, it. you want to loosen this one? It's getting caught in that rock. Get it on the other side. Okay. Pull up the uh, pull up the slack. You want to pull this one too? You should be able to go with that one now for a little while. Yep. This boulder's pretty loose right here, man. So that snowmobile actually went flipping 
like two or three times uh, down there. And it was actually landed up with the skis up in the air. And then eventually my dad said he just tossed it to the ground. I wasn't riding with him. So, but as far as uh, channel update, so a couple things uh, from last video. Tractor's put away. Once it gets nice out, we're gonna start servicing that thing because it needs a couple of th just regular basic service things done to get ready for spring. Two is planner. I'm still in the search for one online. I haven't found one yet. Uh, I, there's a couple places I'm gonna check out that are local dealers around here that I'm gonna go look at some planners. And then the building's not all finalized yet. The 60 by 120 we're trying to put up, it might not be those dimensions. I'm trying to figure that all out and I haven't chose an exact builder yet. I'm still working on getting some quotes back for that. So that'll be in the next coming weeks most likely. And then the 88 acre farm, I closed on that on Monday. And once, once the snow dries up and I can actually drive on it and see the ground, uh, I'm gonna do a whole video on farmland and uh, and that farm specifically. So, and then I've had a ton, ton of comments in past videos to explain like the finances of this operation and break this down. And personally, that's what that's what interests me the most: finance and economics. I'm 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 just kind of a nerd into it. So I'll do a video kind of breaking that down and mainly my daily life and past history and basically like the daily daily life of a wannabe farmer, like to try and get to this point of starting an operation. So I need to make that video and that's probably gonna be the next video. So thanks again guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.